All right, here we have a question that says, what is the ventricular axis in the following leads? And those are those leads down here, okay? And these leads, as you may recall, are the six limb leads, okay? The six limb leads, they're on the left side of the standard 12 lead ECG. And if you can imagine, you'd have the other precordial leads that would sit here, right? You'd have V1 here, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6, okay, and remember those are the precordial leads, okay? So we're looking at the ventricular axis in these leads here, which are the limb leads, okay? And those are often the axis that we're talking about, and the standard um, ECG will tend to give you that axis when you look at it, okay? So that's the uh, ventricular axis, or you'll see the R wave axis in it, okay? So both meaning the same. So ventricular axis, remember, the P wave has an axis, the T wave has an axis, and so does the ST segment and so forth. So everything has an axis. In this case, we often look at the ventricular axis, which will help us with our differential diagnosis. Now, uh, one thing I want you to do is always draw out these uh, quadrant systems. You'll see that here, okay? Because it helps if you're initially learning how to interpret an ECG, especially learning how to get the axis okay so here we have our quadrant system and this is where zero degree sits this is positive 90 degrees this would be positive 180 degrees okay and then from zero you'd get negative 90 degrees okay and then this negative 180 so you see it plus or minus 180 now oftentimes when we look at an ecg if you're not dealing with pediatric patients uh, we have an adult ecg and one thing you should note is the adult axis and lies between about negative 30 okay so maybe about here so let's just erase that so that's better so negative 30 degrees okay so coming about here and then it comes down here to about positive 100 degrees okay or between that and 110 degrees what i mean by that is that the normal ventricular axis lies in this region all this is considered normal now if you're up in this region we call this a left axis deviation or pathologic left axis deviation okay and that's this one here so pathologic normal axis would be here and this is the right axis deviation okay which is this third answer choice. And up here is our northwest axis. You may also hear as extreme axis deviation, okay, or right superior axis, or no man's land. So many different ways. So again, this is the pathological leftward axis deviation. This is more physiologic, okay? So you may hear those differently, okay? Now let's assume we're dealing with an adult so we have an axis here, okay? In children, remember, they have more of a rightward axis in the ventricular axis because from like 32 weeks until about one month after birth, the right ventricle is really dominating. Remember, once they breathe that first breath of air, the uh, lungs start to take in blood. Remember, in the uh, fetus, remember, it's the mother that's providing that oxygenated blood okay to the right ventricle then it passes through um, the ductus arteriosus to the rest of the body and in the infant but here well let's talk about the adult okay so normal axis here all right now what i want you also to do is know where the leads are placed and the main leads when you're first learning that i want you to be aware of are lead one okay and when i put these leads that means the positive ends of those leads and this is avf sitting down here at positive 90 degrees all right so those are the two leads i want you to focus on all right now when we look here we look at lead one which is here on in our limb leads and this is avf okay so to orient yourself you're looking down here and you're also looking here now the question asked about the ventricular axis so we're going to focus on the qrs complexes which are these here okay and those leads and what we're going to do is see if they are mostly positive or negative okay and i mean that from baseline so if you look here imagine our baseline here you can see from the top of it to the bottom makes it mostly positive so this is a mostly positive qrs complex and you can see the same thing here all right and when you look down here at avf you're measuring this positive deflection compared to the negative deflection and you can clearly see maybe a little more evident here that it's the positive end that is more uh, greater in amplitude than that negative deflection okay so both avf and one are positive so we said one is positive that means we're going towards the positive end of lead one okay so here's the positive end remember this is the positive end of lead one we're going towards it if it was negative we'd go in the opposite direction next we said avf was also positive so here's the positive end of avf okay 
that means we're heading in this direction. All right, so you can see that our axis lies, if you take the resultant vector, somewhere between here. And already you can see that lies within our normal limits, our normal axis. And already we can say that this axis is normal, okay? Now another lead that's helpful to look at is lead two. And lead two sits here at positive 60 degrees. So lead two's positive end is at positive 60 degrees, okay? So if you look at lead two on our ECG, it's this one here. You can see these are mostly upright positive complexes, meaning that we'll go towards the positive end of lead two, okay? Kind of confirming that our axis lies within this region, all right? So again, what we have here is a normal axis, ventricular axis, based on those findings, okay? So the question is, what is the ventricular axis in these following limb leads that we have here? And that's a normal ventricular axis. All right, so that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below if you like what we're doing. In fact, many of you have asked how you could help us out. Really, the best way you could do is simply subscribe and share this resource with your friends. And you get free access to more than 300 videos. There is also a community of over 270,000 of us like-minded individuals on Facebook. So stop over and join the EKG Guys uh, Facebook community. Many of you have also asked some questions. Leave them below or share them on Facebook, and we can try to answer them with a short video so everyone else can learn. We also have a number of new courses with corresponding videos coming out soon, so stay tuned for those. Last but certainly not least, your feedback is incredibly helpful and your kind words are always an encouragement on those long days. So let us know how we're doing. Thank you again for your support. It is truly appreciated. We are the largest, fastest growing EKG resource in the world.